communicating with him. It signifies nothing. You felt that, didn't you? Today, I'm going to explain a horror sci-fi movie called Patrick Evil Awakens. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens with a nurse cautiously walking into a darkened room. She scans the area with her camera's flash when suddenly a figure appears out of nowhere and attacks her. A lethal syringe is then thrust into her eye, causing her body to spasm violently. After a while, the nurse passes away and the killer drags her body away from there. In the next scene, we meet Dr. Roget, who runs a private hospital that only treats comatose patients. He's currently in a meeting with the hospital's director, who asks about the status of his research. Roget responds that he's working on it, but the director warns him that if he doesn't deliver soon, the investors will withdraw their funds. In the afternoon, a nurse named Kathy Yacard arrives at the facility for a job interview. She is greeted by the head nurse, Cassidy, who seems a bit grumpy. Shortly after, Roget enters the room and asks her a series of medical questions. Kathy answers all of them with confidence and accuracy, so Roget ends up hiring her for the position. Afterward, Kathy receives her uniform, and another nurse named Paula gives her a tour of the facility. During this, Paula reveals that Cassidy is actually Dr. Rogat's daughter, though they prefer to keep their relationship discreet, which is why she's telling her this within 10 minutes of meeting her. She also mentions that the previous nurse before Kathy disappeared overnight, but no one knows why. Next, Paula introduces Kathy to each patient as they walk down the hallway. They soon arrive at room 15, where a young man named Patrick has been in a coma for years. Paula reveals that Dr. Rogat pays special attention to him and is conducting some sort of experiment. Experiment. Unlike the other patients, Patrick appears to be in relatively good health. A curious Kathy approaches to greet him, but he suddenly spits at her. Thankfully, it's just an involuntary muscle reflex, and there's nothing to worry about. Later, Kathy is alone, sweeping the floor. When she hears an unusual alarm sound, she turns around and is horrified to see a man with a scarred face. Kathy begins to panic until Paula arrives and explains that the man is Mr. Fraser, one of their patients. It turns out that Fraser was injured in an experiment explosion, but was able to wake up from his coma because of Dr. Rogat. Paula then takes Kathy to Fraser's room, which is filled with clocks. She reveals that every day at 7 p.m., the man operates a nearby lighthouse. Later that night, Kathy is in her room scrolling through Facebook when she gets a call from her ex, Ed, but she coldly ignores it and even deletes his phone number. Just then, there's a knock at the door, and it's Paula, who wants to go out. Kathy agrees, and the two of them head to a bar for a drink. There, Paula introduces her to a man named Brian, who is a psychiatrist but mostly writes and hosts a radio show. He shows an interest in Kathy and she also finds herself attracted to him. The next day, Rogat takes Kathy to room 15 but warns her not to speak with Patrick at any cost. Once they get inside, the doctor immediately starts conducting experiments. He injects Patrick and pokes him in several places on his body. Rogat then examines his brain activity but detects no signal. This frustrates him greatly, so he abandons the experiment then abruptly leaves. The scene then cuts to the weekend where Kathy visits a nearby museum and runs into Brian. As they engage in conversation, he receives a missed call from an unknown number. Brian ignores it for the time being and invites her to coffee. She happily agrees, but then he responds by suddenly spitting on her. Kathy finds this disgusting and angrily storms off from there. The next morning, Brian arrives at her place to apologize for what happened. He admits that he doesn't remember what he did and asks for her forgiveness. Kathy is still mad at him, but she accepts his apology and invites him inside. They then start to drink and enjoy each other's company, but their evening is cut short by a knock on the door. It turns out to be Kathy's ex, Ed, who has come to make amends. She isn't interested in seeing him and firmly tells him to leave. However, Ed gives his temporary address and states that he won't leave town until they resolve their issues. The incident ruins Kathy's mood, and she asks Brian to leave as well. But as he prepares to go, his hands start to shake uncontrollably. This causes him to accidentally shatter a glass, which severely Severely injures his hand. Kathy then rushes into the hospital for treatment and returns home afterward. Late that night, Brian unexpectedly returns to her house and they begin to get intimate. However, during the peak of their pleasure, she notices something alarming. Brian's face suddenly morphs into Patrick's and his skin begins to wither like a mummy. Kathy screams in horror and soon awakens from her sleep, revealing that it was just a nightmare. The next day, she arrives at work and sees Dr. Rogat continuing his painful experiment 
comments on Patrick after he leaves Kathy goes near the patient and he reacts by spitting on her. This leaves her fuming and she immediately slaps him hard. But when Patrick starts crying, she regrets her actions and apologizes. Strangely, he spits again and Kathy realizes that he's trying to communicate. She then instructs him to spit once for yes and twice for no. After this, Kathy starts touching various parts of his body and asks if he feels anything, to which he responds by spitting. She soon becomes carried away and touches his private parts, asking if he can feel her. I feel something all right. Unfortunately, Cassidy catches her in the act and summons her to her office. The head nurse scolds her for trying to communicate with Patrick and even touching him inappropriately. Kathy reveals that he's conscious, but Cassidy doesn't believe this and curses all the patients, wishing them a quick death. While they're arguing, Rogette arrives and demands proof of Kathy's claim. She then leads him to Patrick and asks him to spit, but the patient doesn't respond this time. This disappoints Dr. Rogette, who claims that the spitting was actually caused by an electrical current from the medical equipment installed in his body. Later that night, we notice the computer in Patrick's room turning on itself. It is revealed that he has telekinetic abilities, allowing him to control objects without physical contact. Patrick starts browsing through Kathy's social media and looks at her pictures. When he comes across a photograph of her with Ed, he feels a surge of jealousy. She touches my penis now. The next day, Kathy approaches Patrick alone and asks why he didn't react in front of the doctor. He responds by using his telekinetic abilities to type the word secret into the nearby computer. This shocks Kathy, but before she can respond, Paula shows up. The word on the monitor disappears. In the evening, Kathy meets with Ed and they finally resolve their relationship issues. They chat for a long time and Ed heads to the kitchen to cook. At this moment, he receives a missed call from an unknown number. Before he can figure out who it is, Patrick gains control over Ed and makes him place his hand on a grill. Moments later, when Kathy arrives in the kitchen, she is horrified to find Ed's hand severely burned. She rushes him to the hospital, where the doctor explains that Ed's nerves were so damaged that he couldn't even feel the pain. Despite the terrible accident, Kathy returns to the facility and tries to communicate with Patrick. To her surprise, he once again begins to respond through the computer. Kathy asks if he wants the doctor to stop torturing him, but he refuses. When she asks why, he only talks to her, Patrick responds that it is because she has always treated him kindly. Later, when the doctor arrives to perform another painful experiment on Patrick, Kathy tries to protest. She argues that the procedure is inhumane, but the doctor tells her to mind her own business. In the evening, Kathy meets with Brian and tells him everything about the cruel experiments Dr. Rogat has been conducting. She also claims that they must act quickly or Patrick might lose his life. Upon hearing this, Brian is shocked and he promises to speak with his reporter friends to find a solution. The next day, Day, Kathy is approached by Rogat, who is furious with her for spreading rumors about him. He reveals that Brian has been calling and asking him various questions. However, she denies knowing anything about this and walks away. Later, she tells Patrick that she's going to help him and that he will finally be free from Rogat's experiments. But he responds that he doesn't need her help and wants things to stay the way they are. Just then, the clock strikes seven and Fraser activates the lighthouse. This reduces the voltage, causing Patrick's typing to become erratic. That evening, Brian heads to to the facility to investigate and tries to call Kathy on the way. However, his phone suddenly overheats, causing his car seat to burn. It turns out that Patrick has taken control of his phone and the car. The accelerator pedal is pressed to the floor and the brake pedal also stops working. Unable to control the vehicle, Brian eventually drives off a cliff and falls to his death. The next day, Rogat continues his experiments, but Kathy has had enough. She intervenes in the middle of the procedure and removes the electric shock device. Unfortunately, this causes Patrick's heart rate monitor to flatline. Paula quickly attempts CPR on him, while Kathy administers an adrenaline injection. In the end, Patrick is brought back to life, but Cassidy angrily throws both the nurses out. Afterwards, she confronts her father and urges him to stop the experiments. She believes that Patrick came into their lives as a curse, and he's going to end them all. But the doctor responds that he's on the verge of a breakthrough and can't give up now. Meanwhile, while Kathy hears the news about Brian's death and becomes furious, she immediately confronts Rogat and accuses him of orchestrating it. However, the man has no idea what she's talking about and fires her on the spot. The next day, Cassidy takes a lethal injection and heads to Kathy's place, intending to kill her. We learn from a flashback that she was the one who killed the nurse at the start of the movie. Upon her arrival, Cassidy warns Kathy never to return to the clinic again. She admits that she and her father are guilty of terrible things, but the real monster 
here is Patrick. She then hands Kathy a file on Patrick and warns that his love is more dangerous than his hate. Cassidy also admits that she came here to kill her today, but she's too tired for that now. After the woman leaves, Kathy begins reading the file carefully and discovers that Patrick used to be obsessed with his mother. One day when he discovered her in the bathtub with a lover, he killed them both by throwing a toaster in the water. If his mother and her boyfriend couldn't stop him from doing that, they deserved it. He then plunged his hands into the bath to electrocute himself, which led to his coma. Back at the facility, Cassidy sends her father to a patient's home, who has become gravely sick. She also orders Paula to go to town and purchase some medical supplies. After everyone leaves, Cassidy decides to murder Patrick and grab a pair of scissors, but unfortunately, he uses his powers to force her to drop them. Meanwhile, Kathy is taking a bath when she realizes Patrick's telekinetic abilities are more dangerous than she expected. She understands that he is responsible for what happened to Brian and Ed. Worried? She immediately calls her boyfriend and asks him to leave the city as soon as possible. At this point, a message saying, you are mine, appears on her steamed up mirror. An enraged Kathy screams at Patrick and calls him a pathetic child, but this only angers him and he makes the mirror explode. Do you know who I am? Bitch, I'm a computer, injuring her hands. Elsewhere, Cassidy goes to the basement of the facility. She wants to shut down the power and, with it, the machines that keep Patrick alive. But to her dismay, he controls the wires around the room and immediately electrocutes her to death. Shortly after, Rogat returns to the facility and looks for his daughter. But while doing so, he gets locked in the laboratory by Patrick. The next person to arrive is Ed, who has been worried about Kathy because of her voicemail. He runs into Paula, who is now under Patrick's control. Ed asks her about Kathy, but she doesn't respond and walks away. Ed follows her, hoping to find his girlfriend, but Paula ends up trapping him in a freezer. Not long after, Kathy arrives at the facility, only to discover that all the patients have suddenly gotten up. They begin chanting, Patrick wants a hand job. <laughs> It wasn't a joke, which weirds her out and scares her at the same time. As Kathy tries to escape, she encounters Paula, who's still under Patrick's control. He leads her to the elevator door, which quickly opens, causing her to fall to the ground. Paula is fortunately not injured, which brings Kathy some relief, but her relief is short-lived as Patrick releases the elevator and crushes the nurse to death. In the aftermath, a distraught Kathy goes to room number 15, which turns out to be locked. She then receives a text from Patrick saying he loves her. Kathy screams out. Him, asking if this is the same love he felt for his mother, but he doesn't respond and simply tells her that he has locked up Ed somewhere. This worries Kathy greatly, and she runs around the facility searching for her boyfriend, but to no avail. Soon, she arrives at the laboratory, where Rogat is seen eating alive frogs. He claims that the lunatic patient forced him to do it. Share, buddy. Rogat then abruptly runs away from the room but locks the door behind him, trapping Katie inside. After this, he grabs a lethal syringe and attempts to kill Patrick with. However, the latter throws him out of the room and uses his own electric shock device on the doctor. Fraser notices Roget in pain and intends to pull out the electric shock, but then his alarm clock rings and he rushes to the lighthouse. It is evident that his lighthouse fetish is more important than saving someone's life. Unfortunately for the doctor, he ends up dying a painful death. As all of this is happening, Kathy manages to escape and discovers Ed trapped in the freezer. She tries her best to get him out, but is unable to do so. At this moment, the nurse, who was killed at the start, awakens inside the freezer. It turns out she is being controlled by the comatose freak like a puppet. She then approaches Ed and starts strangling him aggressively. This terrifies Kathy, and she begs Patrick to save her boyfriend. In response, he sends her a text, promising that if she joins his side, he will release her boyfriend. Unfortunately for her, his side means fingers in the butt. Hearing this, the poor woman has no option but to agree to his demands. Patrick then hands her the lethal injection and forces her to make a choice. He says that she must either inject herself and be with him, or let Ed die. Kathy thinks for a while and agrees to unalive herself, but she also keeps an eye on the clock, knowing that the lighthouse lamp will be turned on soon. To delay the time, she tries to make small talk with Patrick and expresses her love for him. When the clock strikes seven, Fraser turns on the lighthouse, causing the electricity voltage to drop. Kathy then takes full advantage of the temporary darkness by inserting the syringe into Patrick's heart as his life drains away. The dead nurse's body in the freezer also loses strength. This finally allows Ed to breathe, and he gets out of the freezer. The two lovers then reunite and embrace each other in tears. Moments later, they notice Patrick's body being thrown out the window. It lands on the fence in front of the door, and impales his heart. The moral of this story is do not touch the peni of coma patients.